Hey guys, welcome back. Woodward Sports Network. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button. It helps YouTube push our content out to more people. And it is a pleasure to be joined now uh, by the great Lomas Brown, Lions radio analyst, one of the great Lions of all time, going up into the up? of the Lions coming up here when the Lions host the Raiders on Monday Night Football. How you doing, Lomas? I'm good, man. I'm good. How you guys? Y'all sounding good, looking good. <laughs> hey, feel, feeling yeah. good with a twist here, Lomas. I think a Can lot of us are trying to, to catch our breath here and try to pick our, our chins up off the deck a little bit uh, after it's been revealed that C.J. Gardner-Johnson uh, has a torn pectoral, pectoral muscle. Dan Campbell said earlier today that they may get him back uh, at some point this season. But nonetheless, it's a huge blow for the Lions and just all of the injuries that happened over the last week. Yeah, man. And it, it seems to be a thing going on in the NFL, period. But, man, it hit us hard. It really did. I mean, you talk about the guys that we were missing, and then you added all the other guys. I mean, you think about James Houston. You know what he brought to this team that's going to be gone and you know you never know with big v how he's going to be out and you know even the guys that got nicked up Amon ross st brown and some of those guys that went back in the game but now we're finding out that these guys have injuries so cj man that that hurt me man because that's my gator that's my fellow gator and i know how emotional he was to that secondary not only the secondary like you say to this whole team so that's going to be a big piece that's going to be missing. But like they say, and Braylon knows, next man up. So that's how it's going to have to be for the guys on the team. Hey, Lomas, you mentioned the injuries. I mean, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, Hal Vitae, David Montgomery, Amon Ross St. Brown, Kirby Joseph, James Houston, Antoine Green, and then every team, every team in the league has a laundry list like yeah. this for injuries. Why is this happening? Is, is, it because, is it because of the turf or is it because their bodies are just not conditioned anymore with the lack of practice uh, to, to take this kind of punishment? So I, I don't know how Braylon feels, but for me, I don't see how these guys could get ready. I, I just don't. It's no my first action of the year could be the first game of the year. It, 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 I just I don't care how much practice I got. I don't care who we win against, you know, in joint practices. You don't get the game. You don't get everything that you get in the game, you know. And I, I just it, – it's astounding to me how, how, like I say, now most guys, when they go into the season, the first game of the season is just their live action. And so I know I couldn't function that way. So it, it's tough, man. And I think that might have something to do with these injuries that are happening to some of these guys. You can't put it all on that, but I know it has to contribute somewhat. No, Big Lou, I agree with you 100%. Uh, at Lloyd Carr had this anvil at University of Michigan that you would try to pick up for two, three years while you were there. And it took me three years of like really like working my hamstring <laughs> to be able to pick this anvil up. And finally, I did it. Went back to Michigan three years later, still strong low, still in tip top shape, tried to pick it up. Couldn't do it because my body wasn't used to yeah. doing it anymore. My hand wasn't used to doing it anymore. When we were playing in training camp, we took those two a days to hit. Some running yes. slants in the, in, the, in the mouth of the, of the linebackers and the safety, getting hit when the season starts. Now you're ready to take those hits. You get hit, you get up and shake them off because you're used to feeling. So I agree with you uh, in that. I want to talk about your side of the ball and your position, the offensive line. We know Taylor Decker went down. We know Panay Sewell went over. But they just didn't seem like they ever got their footing on Sunday, especially in the second half. Is there cause for concern at the offensive line position with Taylor Decker out? Are they still in good position and Big V? Hey, that's a great question because you're right. I mean, I thought we would have been able to dominate that game up front. I really did. Going into the game, I thought we could control – both sides of the line of scrimmage, especially with them coming in without their two uh, tackles. Um, but, you know, for us to lose these guys, yeah, you you lose some chemistry off the offensive line because this was, the you know, last week, I'm, I'm sorry, the Kansas City game was the yeah. first game that all five of those guys had started. And like you say, for them not to have Taylor, for them to have to move Panay over to the left side and bring in Matt Nelson, I just think it threw the chemistry off, but 
Again, you got to win your one-on-one yeah. battles, Braylon, and that's what they didn't do. I mean, neither side of the ball did we really win our one-on-one battles. When you think about us having one sack, one quarterback pressure or hit, and them having the opposite where they were getting to Jared, they may not have a lot of sacks, but they were putting pressure on Jared. We should have dominated that game at both lines of scrimmage. We didn't. So hopefully this is just a blip. I'm hoping yeah. it's just a blip, but you know we work like a hand in the glove up front on the offensive line, so we have to have chemistry there. So hopefully this won't affect the chemistry too much with us having to shuffle the offensive line around. Chemistry is definitely a key, and I agree with you. Hopefully it won't hurt it too much because it still is a really damn good offensive line, and I feel like they'll get it right. Yeah. They'll get the, they'll get the lineup right through the week, and they'll be okay coming into this Sunday against the Falcons. But talk about the offensive side for just two seconds, and as it relates to the skill position. David Montgomery gets hurt. You didn't necessarily draft Jameer Gibbs to be this go you know, break tackles and run through the middle, going off the the, the white the one and the two ISO. You didn't draft him that. Are you a little bit nervous that Jameer Gibbs, Craig Reynolds are now the backs in the backfield? Yeah, I'm I, I, I'm hoping that man, I don't want to sound let me <laughs> Right. I, I'm hoping that this is a little blessing with David getting hurt, man. I know I'm gonna get criticized off that. I didn't mean that, David. Be I don't want yeah, you to I know. get hurt. I got you. Yeah, yeah. but I, 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 you know, exactly. You Maybe it's so yeah. that that'll help the process a little faster, Braylon. You know that you got to get reps, you got to get game experience, and then and again, he, he didn't get none of that. David has that. David can bounce back. David knows, you know, what to do. He's been in the fires. Jameer hadn't yet. So I think as many reps as he can get, I think he's only going to get better and better and better. You start seeing things. The, the, the offense starts slowing down for you and everything, and it would have helped. I think one thing that I watched in the game, man, right now he's just reading fast. And what I mean like that is, He's not giving his, his blocks a chance to set up right now and not really reading the hole. He had an opportunity in the game one time to stick his foot in the ground and get some good yardage, and he tried to mm, bounce it to the outside. But those things you learn, you're going to learn you can't outrun everybody in the NFL or can't outfake everybody. So he's young. He's going to learn it. So hopefully with these reps as he's going to get over the next couple of weeks, hopefully that'll help speed up the process. Agreed. Hey, Lions analyst, former Lions great, future Hall of Famer Lomas Brown joins us. Low, I wanted to ask you about Sunday's game, a game that I thought they gave away. Uh, we've talked about the turnovers. You got to win that battle. Even though they lost the turnover battle, they had a chance to go down and put Seattle away in regulation. What was your thoughts on that, how the game ended uh, with Dan Campbell and Ben Johnson calling plays? Yeah, I know they're catching a lot of grief about that. I, I, I really do. But, you know, again, a lot of times I think a lot of things happen early in the game that causes you to do certain things later on in the game. And, you know, I don't know why, because Dan has always been this aggressive guy. Right. You know, that's just his nature. And it just seemed like he went against his nature, you know, the last, that last series of the, of, you know, of the game. So, you know, that's that's probably one he's probably soul searching. You know, after the Minnesota game last year, that was a game that, you know, that haunted him the rest of the year. And I think, you know, maybe some of the decisions that he made, I don't think he'll second guess himself, but I think it's something that he's probably going to relive and probably think about. And when they come up next time, it, it, it'll probably, it might be a different result. But he's just been an aggressive guy and it was just kind of out of, you know, uncharacteristic of him to kind of go out of the, the nature of how he's been, especially late in the game. And especially, you know, when when the game's on the line and you can win the game, you know, because you play to win the game. <laughs> yeah, 1,000%. Hey, Lum, look, a lot of fans in the chat right now, they're like, damn, what are the Lions going to be? A little nervousness. Give them a peace of mind. Ease them up a little bit. What do the Lions yeah. need to do? Change the game plan? Cause look, this is still the same team. Couple injuries, whatever. One let's, and one. Let's, let's, let's take it back. <laughs> let's take it back. Give them some optimism, Big Long. Hey, I, I, I got them. I got them, man. Look, 
They got we got a Atlanta team coming in town. They like to run the ball. Look, I I think what we get we got to do again is we have to dominate the line of scrimmages. That's where it's going to start and stop at on the offensive side of the ball. If we can run the ball, it opens up everything else for Jared, man. It opens up our game so much. And like I say, we need to get that young fella experience. On the defensive side of the ball, man, we got to, we got to bring it. Either we got to bring it with our four or five guys that we rotate up front with the D-line, or we're going to have to manufacture pressure um, by bringing safeties or bringing corners. But we got to get these quarterbacks uncomfortable. You can't let a quarterback, I don't care if he's a first-year or a 15th-year quarterback, get comfortable. He's going to eat us up. Geno got too comfortable back there. Uh, and you see what happens. So we're going to have to get to those guys early and often, as I like to say, and it's going to have to start with the guys up front. So to me, we got – and we got the ingredients. So don't yeah. don't don't panic out there. We got the team. We got the people on the team to get it done. We just had to get it done. And I think we should be able to get it done against the 2-0 and Atlanta Falcons this year. I'm not still sold on Desmond Ritter. And like you say, they got B. John Robinson there. And you're right. They don't know how to use their weapons. So let's not let uh, Ritter get comfortable and start using those weapons that he don't know how to use right now. (laughs) Hey, hey, Lomas, last thing. Um, Jared Goff said that Sunday's game was the best home atmosphere he had ever played in in any level of football. Uh, in high school, obviously college, the NFL, he played for the Rams, uh, what have you. Can you describe how loud it was in that building on Sunday? It was loud. It was loud, but it wasn't the loudest that I've ever heard. So I'm going to put a challenge out to the fans. Ooh. You know, hey, and I know we packed it in. I know we had a few more people in there at the Silverdome. But I'm telling you, that 91 Silver Dome game, <laughs> I'm telling you, you couldn't hear people talking to you standing right here next to you. Yeah. That's how loud it was. And then, like I say, I know we had a few more thousand than they had at 3,000 to be exact. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> 33,000 to be exact. So, so, but, but, yeah, so it, but it was, it was a great Easter atmosphere. Day. Yeah, and, and Braylon, I love seeing everybody bring with the ski ski mask on. Man, yeah. the blue, the blue yeah. was up in there. It was electric. I just wish we could have won that thing, man, for the fans because they brought it. They brought yeah. it early too. I got to the stadium like a quarter to ten. Man, <laughs> people had been out there for hours before I had got there. No doubt. They need the candles, ski masks until they get a W. Yeah, right. Just put them on the show. I know, I know, I know. Until we get a W. Hey, hey Lomas, any chance if the Lions need a left tackle and a running back that you can call your friend Barry Sanders and saying. maybe you guys can suit up this week against I got no players? Look, I'm a- Hey, at the tender age of 60, I could give you one good play. And, high, and, and B, and high B looking right now shape-wise, he hey. might be able, be able to only give you one good play right now. So, Just you know, one. neither one of us both us will give y'all one good play. I think we could break it out. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, the great Lomas, the great Lomas, bro. We love you, Lomas. Thanks, Thanks so much for joining us here. Absolutely. Listen to Lomas, Brown and Dan Miller. We love you. Lions See Radio Broadcast. Uh, absolutely. Lomas. One of the great Lions of all time going into the Lions Pride coming up against the Raiders uh, in uh, October Monday Night Football.